For this edition of Youth Power, we welcome Devon Rowland, an up-and-coming cinematographer. Welcome to you. Good morning, SKF. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. How is everyone doing? Great. I should say welcome back to Good Morning SK because you've been here behind the scenes. Yeah, multiple times. Multiple times. People don't know that. People know now. They know okay. now. <laughs> so it's good to have you here, Devon. And uh, let's talk about uh, your career in videography and uh, photography. How did that begin? Okay. Well, to be honest, I was actually studying medicine. And in high school, that was like my interest. And my head teacher, my headmaster, Miss Joy Napier, she always told me, you know, you're very creative, you should pursue something. And I used to do music on the side, but it was more so I was always thinking about going to do medicine. Okay. And a photography competition came about and she was like, you should enter, you know, it's fun. And I was like, ah, I really have no interest. I never did photography, so I didn't really have an interest. And she pushed me, she pushed me, pushed, she pushed me. I actually entered my photo on the deadline of the photography competition, and I won. Oh, nice. And then I kind of just kind of dabbled with it ever since, okay. but I didn't really take it serious until leaving college in 2018. Okay, so I might su to, su to suggest that you went to school in Nevis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. my entire life, Nevis. <laughs> Architectural, <laughs> though, but. Oh, okay. Ne Nevision. Okay, nice. I got you. Nice. So, Jamie, before you continue, so what about those studies for medicine there on hold? Are you going to pursue them later? No. Oh, wow. Okay. No. Oh, all right. That, that's, 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 that's fine in the past. Okay. It's fine in the past. It's <laughs> okay. fine in the past. Okay. I just keep up the knowledge in case somebody take in around me. Okay. So I could, you know, lend some form of assistance. Okay. But in terms of actually pursuing it as a career now, that's yeah. in the past. Okay. I'll just call you Doctor Cinematography. That, that works, right? <laughs> that sounds <laughs> perfect. Okay, <laughs> awesome. All right, so your skills and experience, obviously you dabbled, you dabbled in it over the years, mm -hmm. but let's talk about building those skills to the point where you realized, you know what, this is something I can make a career out of. Okay, so growing up in Nevis, it was like looking around, you build your skill pool depending on the professionals you see in your environment mm -hmm. but there was probably only maybe two three photographers in Nevis and I've always been raised to think outside the box so I had a lot of Kitishan friends and I realized Kitishan was more so the creative side of the federation while Nevis was the more business oriented side if you want to put it that way so I gained more connections I started to understand networking very early so I gained more connections but then there was still a certain level that I wanted to tap into so I started studying cinema which is movies I started to watch movies and then I started to break down watch breakdowns watch how movies are made watch how watch what makes a million dollar movie different from a Caribbean after movie and understanding that and implement it into my mm -hmm. Caribbean style, so to say. Mm -hmm. And that is what kind of gained, where I gained the growth from. I'm kind of aiming for a level okay. that they say can only be achieved through millions, but achieving it where I'm at now. One follow up. What is that difference between those two types? Planning. Mm -hmm. We shoot a lot of events here. Mm -hmm. We shoot a lot of run and gun stuff. So we kind of been programmed to think that we can't plan a shoot. So like if you're going to shoot an event, someone say, hey, I want you to do the after movie for me event. They say, okay, cool. But then you kind of just wait till the event come, you shoot some clips and then you edit them together. Where I would sit down, my son edit the video too. I would have key shots that I want to capture and then capture them at the event and they would be the driving force mm -hmm. of my video. So like there are certain parts of my video I would tell you, I could tell you that I've had them in my head before the video was created so that when I go on the day, I look, I look, I look and then I find the moment and then I'm like, okay, I could create this with this. Wow. And then mm -hmm. it's just planning. There's a reason why a movie takes two to three years to film because most of it is post-production, mm -hmm. then production, pre-production, po production, then post-production. Mm. You can't enter it without all the steps working together. 
So when you film something for somebody, how soon can they expect to have it in their hands? Oh, oh yeah, no me no. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious I don't. Oh yeah, no me no. Oh, my videos will be up the next day. Wow. But you said you planned everything you wanted. That's you why they it could together. be up the next day. Wow. Okay, you go, guy. So I just, Keep I just. Up. Really, if you ever don't see a video up for me the next day, mm -hmm. probably because I'm sleepy. Yes, sir. And because <laughs> I'm having trouble editing it, my videos will be up the next day. Okay. They edit, sometimes they're up the same day. Okay, I have one more question. Are you, from what I'm hearing, are you self taught? Yeah. Wow. And then um, a lot of my skill, I would be honest, is a lot of raw ability. So it's a lot of raw talent i'm okay. very open with saying that i feel like people shy away from saying that because okay. it seems egotistical but i'm a lot of raw talent okay. a lot of my refining of that talent comes from my workplace which is mm. modern elegance photography okay. they saw it and then they're like okay you could do a lot but fix these things and okay. then nice. you're gonna be able to use them use like properly okay. rather than just having a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I know how to do, but then I try to do all at once and kind of put myself in issues. Okay. So they teach, they te they're teaching me how to use that effectively. Okay. How important is that mentorship for you in terms of your trajectory where you see yourself? In very the important. I am someone who very, I dream a lot. I'm a dreamer. I call mm. myself a dreamer. I base a lot of my goals and dreams. One of my biggest dreams is to get a film award and go up there and just give everybody the credit. That's literally one of my biggest but dreams. But you know the music might cut you off and run you off the stage? Hmm? You know the music might be playing and run you off the stage? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you probably <laughs> planned it before yeah. so you'll know exactly how to do it. Right? Okay, all right. Wow. Now I'm eager to know about uh, some of the first projects that you worked on. Were okay. they really wrong? <laughs> the, my first project, video project, I will be honest with you, because I was in Nevis and I didn't have much of the events that Saint Kitts have. A lot of my event stuff that I wanted to do started when I moved over. Okay. So what I had to do is I actually shot my little sister for years. My little sister is a tennis player and mm -hmm. she likes modeling and she likes fashion and stuff. So I just kind of shot her for years. She, I would just be like, I have an idea. And she would be like, um, what's the idea? And then she'd be like, I'd be like, this is the idea. And then she would say, OK, let's go tongue and do it. And she would always make herself available. So a lot of my improvement actually come from her just being willing. And even I, there was days when I gave up, because right? when I had me first couple ideas and mm -hmm. they didn't come out how I want them to, I was like, OK, this photography thing ain't for me. Aww. But then she would be like, no, 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 you just gotta keep pushing, you gotta right. keep pushing. And then mm. now that I'm somewhat rising, as people say. Devon, how did you come up with the name for your business? I had four names before. Four? Four. Okay. Four. And just a correction, this ain't my business, this is my brand. Oh, oh it's his brand? Yeah. Okay. I don't have a business yet. Okay. It's just my brand. Okay. So I always went through different names. Okay. But I always wanted a name that kind of encaps encapsulated the essence of what I like to capture, okay. which is the story. Okay. And a true story is always a behind the scene process. I like that. So it's BTS, Be behind the scenes Roland, BTS Roland. Okay. Yeah. Behind the scenes Roland. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're not getting off of that easily <laughs> because you had four names. Let's go through some of those. Um, I don't remember any of the other. Wow, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not you're not giving me a behind the scenes look right now. You know? I, <laughs> I, I I can I can genuinely try, mm -hmm. but my little sister sent me one the other day because mm -hmm. it was like going through the like the history and like all the photos, but I don't remember any of them. Mm -hmm. And that's because BTS Roland kind of when I when I came up with the name today and I press enter on Instagram. It was like, yeah, this ain't changing. This is it. No, I've always no. had a, I've always had like, I've always changed my name and be like, I'm going to change this eventually. This mm -hmm. doesn't something about it sounds good, mm -hmm. but something doesn't feel right. 
And then I changed to beauty as well, and I was like, yeah, this is it. This, this is, is it. it. Oh and I had it on Instagram dormant for two years before I actually started using it. That's how much I loved it. Hmm. All right, but since you're talking about social media right now, how do you effectively market your brand on social media? Um, understanding it. Social media is about giving people, I'll, people fast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing because I know that to be true. Oh, okay. So it's about taking the curious nature of people uh -huh. and tagging it targeting it at something okay. so people want to know what's going on with me mm -hmm. okay cool you want to know what's going on i'm shooting an event today watch my video okay okay and i take them along the process and i make i put all my passion into social media mm -hmm. i put all my my ego and drive into social media so that my my reality remains mm -hmm. grounded. Mm -hmm. So all of the letting mm -hmm. it go to your head thing, I channel it through that. Mm -hmm. So that when it's time to grow on myself to create, mm -hmm. that doesn't mask me or blind me. Mm -hmm. I can create very transparently and judge myself very evenly throughout everything without having to be like, yeah, I am that guy and letting it actually affect my growth. Mm -hmm. Cause that's one of my biggest fears actually laying stuff get to my head and affecting my growth and not growing anymore. So mm. I put all of that into social media. So I show them everything, okay. but everything that I want them to see. Because okay. they don't know anything about my personal life, personally, mm. but they know everything <laughs> about my, we know everything about BTS Roland. They don't okay. know anything about Divan Roland. Mm, that's nice, that's nice. I can relate. I love that. Mm. <laughs> You're speaking to me right now. <laughs> Thanks for the confirmation, by the way. <laughs> no problem. Mm. All right. Oh. No, go ahead, Jenny. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just here eager to talk to Devon. Okay, go, go. so what would you say your business is really known for? Because you're talking about the not your business, your brand, forgive me. Brand, yeah. So is there a service? Is there a thing that people go to you for by default, or is it all-encompassing? So at first, it was kind of all over the place. But no, it's I've mainly been transitioning to, to events, event photography, event videography. Um, that's that's it. Events. I how to word this? I see. I feel like every creative mm -hmm. has a certain way that they see the world that someone else can't really relate to. I go to events and I follow events from the moment the first poster is released to when the after movie is released and i call that the event lifeline okay yes i follow the event lifeline and i find the event lifeline very interesting okay. i watch how someone births the event um raises the event nurtures the event and then lets the event go out to college and be its own person mm -hmm. that's how i look at it so i like capturing that story so for me it's just about going and I always tell people when I edit and I do my after movies, it's not really for you, for the people who went. It's for the people who didn't go to regret that they didn't go. You be dropping them on you be dropping them on them. Wow. Yeah, I'm thinking you're capturing wow. you're capturing that story and the way that you speak about it, the event lifeline, it makes everything unique. It's not yeah. just another event. It's yeah. a story that has a life. Yeah. Isn't that great? Mm. I challenge myself by just like I said, planning. It's actually way easier to just go out, shoot, put a bunch of clips together, and think because if I'm being very honest, the standard of saying it's a name is in terms of in terms of cinema is low. Okay. I don't judge myself on that standard. The people okay. I look up to, the people I look at and I'm like, yeah, I want to meet you someday, they are leagues ahead of me. Okay. So it's like I I put myself on that I don't necessarily compare myself to them yes. because I have my own style, but in terms of what I am aiming to achieve in terms of level of quality, it's not on this spectrum, it's on that spectrum. Okay. So it's like I look at that and when I, whenever I put out something that is just a bunch of clips put together, I delete it, I'm like, yeah, the same. 
So I hear your goal, but have you planned, let's say, have you said by 2020 or by 2030, I'm going to be there with these people? Yeah. Have, do you have yeah. such a plan in place? Yeah. Okay. I have a, I have a, I have, I have a two-year plan. Okay. I have a five-year plan, and then I have a 10-year plan. Yeah, that's tough. So with, I'll tell you my two-year, and I'll tell you my five-year plan. Okay. So in two years, between next year, mm -hmm. two years starting next year, okay. actually. Okay. So next year going to be the first year in the okay. two-year plan. I want to have, I want to go to every Caribbean carnival. And, okay. But not just travel and go. I want to be hired to go and shoot. Mm. I don't feel like it's an accomplishment if I go myself. Okay. It's a personal accomplishment for luxury. But I want to be recognized, chosen, and go out to shoot okay. like this is my duty me out here to have fun i yes. will have fun yes but i'm out here mainly for this purpose that okay. is and i want to do it for every caribbean carnival nice. i want to visit all and i don't count miami as the caribbean carnival <laughs> okay. even though people say it's like the ending i want okay. to go to every caribbean island carnival. okay got you got um for five years i want to take the footage from that and create a carnival documentary. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Good thing. I can actually visualize that. Yeah. And if I can visualize it, I can mm. only imagine what your yeah. mind is already doing. I already have this story. Yeah. It's just to put in the work to get the opportunities to go. Oh, yeah. You've spoken it, so the universe is listening. So we pray that it works out. Yeah. I feel like it will. It will. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I just got uh, mesmerized by some footage that I saw on the screen because we were going to be speaking, of course, to you about the highlights of your career. And we have a few. Carnival 2022, 2023. We've got the Old World Rum Shoots. And we've got Cooler Fat. What was the takeaway from each of these, if you remember the highlights? Okay. Okay, there is some of your footage. Okay. Oh, that looks so nice. I don't know who shot it. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know, y'all. We don't know who. Oh, that's my friend Chevy. Right? Uh -huh. Okay, so the. I'll tell you, everything that you saw in December was done to create the carnival video. Okay. At the start of December, I actually sat with my friends and I said, I've been waiting for carnival to touch the road for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a lover of the carnival experience. So I've been waiting for carnival to touch the road again since COVID. Yes. So I decided every event I go to, I'll shoot and I'll put out a video. But all of that will be leading to parade. Mm -hmm. Parade will be my best video I've put, because I've always told people on my Instagram, mm -hmm. the level of quality that I can produce, I, don't, I haven't actually shown it on Instagram yet. Because no. I want, I don't want to show it, and then tomorrow the quality drops. Okay. So I wanted to. I was building myself mentally, getting my mental in order, so that when I do release it, I could keep the standard every single time. Nice. So nice. it was like kind of timed it perfectly where parade starts the new year. So it's bam, introducing my full potential as of right now. This is what you'll be seeing, and better from no one for the new year. Mm -hmm. So it was that and carnival, that carnival video, I've, I have a bad habit of editing, putting on stuff and then hating them after. I still love that video to this day. Okay, that's, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Now, before we go, I'm going to ask you for some advice for young and upcoming cinematographers. What would you say to them? Um, This the, I learned three things. One, if it's scary, it probably means you should do it. Okay. Because nothing worth doing will seem easy. Two, um, this is something I am learning now. Learn how to balance your time. Okay. Learn time management. I am really bad at it. I'm horrible at it. Believe it or not, I'm really, really bad at it. Like I'm really, really bad, but I'm getting better, right? And three, and this is the biggest lesson for me. Okay. If you have a dream, if you have a goal, 
God, the universe, whatever you believe in, and put it in your head for your mother, your grandmother, your friends, your auntie, put it in your head for you. If you tell them and they don't see it, ain't for them to see. It's for you to see it, believe it, and make it a reality. So if my life goal is to create an, like, you know, Disney animations, yes. is to create one of those, but with all Caribbean culture, with all Caribbean dialect, I don't want to Americanize anything. I always found it fascinating that Disney would create something Mexican related, but then everybody's speaking in an American accent. They're not Mexican. Yeah. So it's like, it takes away. I want to create something like that with our entire culture through and through. Mm -hmm. So that's like my years in the future goal. Mm, okay. And I don't think people think it's, thinks it's possible. I don't care. I'll do it still. Because uh, I know it's possible. Mm -hmm. I've, it's just to apply myself. It's just to put in the work. And it's probably, probably ain't going to get to make five and six of them. Probably going to only be able to make one. But if I do it, then somebody else is going to see it and say, oh, so that's how he do it. Okay. okay. Well, let me try to do it now. And then that person will probably make two. Okay. And then it just starts. Mm -hmm. But it's just takes for somebody so if you have a dream don't tell nobody and even if you tell them and they don't believe it ain't for them to believe oh, okay hmm. it's really good advice you were wise beyond your years and i can't imagine what time will do to you i think I we like all I, will I, see in time i feel like i just read a lot and know how to use words <laughs> <laughs>